Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we've got a little something different to take a look at. This is a Snap-on Tools SPP816 waveform demo board. Snap-on Tools makes uh, tools and uh, test equipment for the automotive industry. And this is a demonstration board for teaching slash setting up uh, automotive oscilloscopes. It's a small little board here. Uh, it's got some, it's got two switches, nine volt battery holder, and a couple pots on the front side. If we look on the back, it's a nice, neat surface mount board. Uh, let me see if I can get close here, get some light on this. Here we go. You can see this is from 1995 Snap On Tools Corporation. So it's about. Mm, 28 years old. Now it's pushing 30 years old. We've got four connectors on the side here. We've got ground and connectors for three of the different outputs on it. Um, nice, compact, simple little board. Getting closer just so everyone can get a look. I think this section over here is, um, I believe it's a, a charge pump. Uh, the board will put out a 50 volt, 40, 50 volt spike uh, for the fuel injector waveform, and that looks uh, capacitors, you know, either uh, dual diodes or transistors. So that looks like it could be uh, could be a charge pump to uh, create that little spike. Uh, the board's in really nice condition for its age. Connected for the ground clip is a little little more worn than the other ones but otherwise um, it's nice and clean. Uh, Snap-on does sell a newer version of this board. It's about a hundred bucks and uh, the newer version just outputs more signals uh, but I guess this was this is pretty much the main concerns back 30 years ago. So I thought we would take it, hook a battery up to it, hook the scope up to it and uh, take a look at what it does. So I happen to have a nine volt battery here. We're gonna put that in there. Uh, nothing to tell you that it's on, um, but we'll know that once we get the scope hooked up. So let's pull that over here. And give that a moment to boot up. Like I said, there's a new version of this board. I think it's got five or six outputs on it. Um, you know, it has more information. But what this board does put out is it puts out um, a variable frequency wave. So this puts out a square wave that varies. Uh, you can adjust the, uh, the frequency of it. It also puts out a fixed voltage that's adjustable from 0 to 5 volts and you can display those with or without a glitch. Um, the glitch for the variable frequency uh, will show the signal drop out for a little bit. The glitch for the variable voltage it'll be a constant voltage and it drops out for about 300 microseconds. The idea being that this would be a simulation of, let's say, a loose wire. So if you have a sensor or something in the car that is there and the wire might be a little loose every once in a while, you know, it jiggles and, and you'll lose the connection. Um, it's the same idea with the variable frequency. And then down on the bottom, it's for the fuel injector pulse width. I'm going to admit I am not a car person. Um, don't really understand exactly what it's showing um, but it's a cool little waveform so you know, definitely something fun to take a look at on the oscilloscope and there's two different versions um, as I understand it uh, from the thing one shows um, the spike it's supposed to be representative of I guess the there's an inductive kickback that happens with them sounds good to me uh, one of them makes one spike one of them makes two spikes uh, and this will show you either one so, let's get this hooked up. And we'll look at the variable frequency first. 
and put that on there and we've got a nice nice square wave here and we can adjust the frequency from it says here from about 135 to almost 900 Hertz um, so we're looking at this without the glitch right now if we turn the glitch on um, and if I speed this up what you'll notice on the way sometimes here is you'll see yep, there was one there was another one you can see where it drops out and what I'm going to do is if I go into single shot mode and if I tell it to look for a dropout and I think in this case if I do a dropout of about one millisecond does it grab it here there we go let me just reduce that one so yeah, let me do a single shot again and there you can see the dropout and it lasts for it looks like uh, one, two, like about three pulses. And if we turn glitch off and we try and do that, we're not going to capture anything. It's just going to bring the trigger level back to it. It's just going to run. So let's move on to, let's look at the variable voltage. The variable voltage is kind of boring. So we go from zero volts up to about five volts here. Um, you know, that's all that does, but if we say with glitch, uh, this is harder to see. Um, if I reduce that, you might see a line pop up. There, there was one right there. You can look for one more. Yep, there was one. So I can uh, I can do the same same type of dropout triggering. And let me get that down to I th what was it? I think somewhere around like 250. And if we single shot it there, and that's the drop from five volts down to zero volts. And we'll do one more. Yeah. So those are the top two, top two test points. So I'm going to move down now to the third, which is the fuel injector pulse width. Sounds exciting. Um, let me just do an auto setup on here. So as far as I can tell, you know, this would be, you know, as each cylinder fires, the fuel injector is, uh, I don't know, injecting fuel. <laughs> um, but we can adjust this pulse width. Let me zoom in here on one. And if we put the switch in the other position, uh, you know, let me reset the, what, how am I triggering here? Let me see. Nope. Uh, edge rising okay that's fine put this back on auto and if we adjust this you know what I'm going to trigger off the, uh, the bottom part here there we go it adjusts the position of the second spike and if we throw some cursors on here um, actually you know what let me just check I've got my probe for 10x Let's let's adjust that so we get proper voltage readings. And we'll throw a cursor on here. Uh, no, that's not it. There we go. Y cursor. Looks 
good and I'll say Y1 and we'll put this at zero volts then Y2 if we come up here we can see that these spikes come up to just uh, just shy of 50 volts and that's in in either case and that's what it does um, so yeah this would have been used by uh, automotive instructors uh, to teach how to use the uh, use the automotive oscilloscopes you know, teach them what to look for, set them up, calibrate them. Uh, it's a pretty cool, pretty, pretty nice little board. So we've been looking at this on the digital scope, and digital scope is great because it does all sorts of different triggering. Um, I'm going to hook this up to my analog scope just so we can take, uh, take a quick look at that. So back in a sec. All right, we've got the SPP816 hooked up to my... Tech 2445 scope. We're looking at the variable frequency output without glitch, and you know it, it's a nice, nice clean square wave that shows up really nicely on there. Uh, if we turn glitch on, and we wait, you can see there was a blip. There was another little blip. You can just barely catch it. Um, if we come down to something like this, uh, you can see it drop out from time to time, but again, it just shows up as a flash. Uh, digital scope definitely displayed that better. If I go to variable voltage, uh, you know, same thing, that looks good. Uh, if we turn glitch on, you can see a little blip now and then. Um, yeah, it's definitely. You can see it's dropping down to zero, but uh, you know, no way, no way to capture that like we can on the digital scope. And if we look at the fuel injector pulse width, bring this down to something that we can see. We've got a single one. That visualizes not too badly. If we look for the double pulse, you know, we can see that pretty well. But again, definitely not as clear as on the digital scope. No way to grab, uh, sort of grab a shot of that. So, not sure back in 95 what kind of scopes they were using. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm not an automotive repair person, so don't know what the, the shop scopes looked like, if they were digital or not. Um, but it definitely, you know, works with an analog scope, but digital, much nicer to capture, uh, capture what it's doing. So that's it for the, uh, the Snap-on SPP816 waveform demo board. Nice little piece of history. From what I gather, these are kind of rare. Uh, I mean, I don't know why Snap-on sold them, but, uh, it's the first time I'd seen one come up on eBay uh, in like forever. So it caught my eye. Seems like it might be something fun to play with. So there you go. Uh, questions or comments, you know, leave them down below. Uh, like and subscribe if you found this interesting. And I will see everyone for the next video. Take care.